Hello everyone and welcome to a guide for immersive engineering. Today we'll be going over how to get your journey started in immersive engineering, which in are including new ores, items, and structures you will need to get started. So let's hop right into it. Immersive engineering adds a new crop. The new seeds are industrial hemp seeds, and the crop will grow to be two blocks tall. And if we walk in and harvest the crop by left clicking breaking the bottom part you will get industrial hemp fiber and industrial hemp seeds that you can replant the seeds can be collected by just breaking tall grass that you find around your world and there's a chance you will get them when you go mining you also see some new ores they consist of copper bauxite lead, silver, nickel, and uranium. Now some of these are a little hard to spot so you will have to be looking close when you go mining. Now to mine copper and bauxite you can do this with stone tools but to mine lead, silver, nickel, and uranium you will need iron. Now each of these act like a normal ingot so when you smelt the ore you'll get a single ingot just like normal minecraft ores and you can craft all of them into blocks just like so and one thing to note is that as you look here you can see that bauxite is not in this list that is because when you smelt bauxite it will give you aluminum so every other ore is just like so but bauxite will give you aluminum so that might get slightly confusing, but that's how the mod has it. One of the main items you'll need is your engineer's hammer. And to make this, you need, you need two sticks, two iron, and one string in this order like so. And that'll give you, you your engineer's hammer. Now this is, a, this is a very important tool because with this you can turn ingots into plates, as well as when you right click it, on certain multi-block structures they will activate. The first multi-block structure you will make for immersive engineering is the coke oven. And to make this you first need coke bricks. Now the coke oven is a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube with every block filled. So you need a total of 27 coke bricks. So you have to do this recipe nine times which is one sandstone in the center with four clay bricks on either side and top and bottom of the sandstone and then four, four clay blobs in the each corners. This will give you your coke brick. This will give three of them and then with that you can then make your coke coal coke oven. So as you can see I have the rough structure of a coke brick oven here. All I have to do is fill in the middle and the last section and then I'll take out my engineer's hammer. Now I can have this face any direction I want as long as I right click one of these center blocks with the engineer's hammer and that block will turn to the center area. So if I wanted to make it face it this way all I would do is just right click this side. So it is not orientation locked. Now what this does if I right click it the main use of this is to turn coal into coal coke and create creosote. So if I just grab a stack of coal and toss it in here in time it will turn all this coal into coal coke. Now what this does is it increases the burn time for coal by a factor of four. So the burn time of coke of coal is 800. Coal coke is 3200. Also later down the line you'll need coal coke to turn iron into steel but we'll get that in a later video. This will also create creosote oil. Now one piece of coal into coal coke will create 500 millibuckets of creosote oil. Now if you do a block one block or nine coal will turn into a block or nine coal coke and that will create 5,000 millibuckets or five buckets worth. And all you do is when you get it, 
you will place a bucket in this blue area here and then it will fill up and then exit through this orange area here. And that's all you really need to know about the cold coke oven. Just a little pointer is that cold coke does take a while but it is also very good use for a power source, especially in generators if certain mods accept it. So since it has a burn time, most of them do. So I'll kind of have this going and it will quadruple the amount of power, I guess you could say, out of most generators. Now that you have your bucket of creosote, you can turn into treated wood planks by putting in a crafting bench surrounded by wooden planks. And depending on how you have the mod set up or mod pack set up, you can either you either need to do it with the same type of wooden planks or you can mix and match. So before you do it, check either NEI, check your NEI to make sure you have it. To make sure if it works one way or both. And each recipe will give you eight treated wood planks. Now there's a couple things you can do with this. This will mostly be used in some crafting recipes later, but this acts like any normal wood so you can turn it into stairs, fences, half slabs, and anything else you can create with normal wood planks. And they also come in three different designs. So if you play treated wood planks in a crafting bench, you can turn them into these vertical treated wood planks. And then if you place these in, you can trade them into treated wood planks crates and then crates will go back into treated wood planks. So if you have a style you're going for or want to use them for decoration, that's how you get the three different kinds. The last tool you'll need to get started is your engineer's wire cutters. And to make these, you need two sticks and an iron, just like so. And the, what this does is it will turn plates into wires. And let me just show you. So to get wires, you have to start with an ingot, hit it with a mallet and hit it with mallet in a crafting bench. That will turn it into a plate. Take the plate with the wire cutters and that will turn it into a wire. Now early on you can only do this with copper. Or I should rephrase that, the most effective one you can do it is with copper. You can also do this with steel, electrum, and aluminum. But to start out, all you would need is copper wires. Now to use those copper wires, you will take four of them in a crafting bench surrounding either a stick or a treated wood stick. And that will give you LV wires. The LV wires are able to transfer 2048 IF or immersive flux. That is the power that this mod uses. Another important block is the copper coil block. To make this, you take an iron ingot and surround it with LV wire. And this will give you a copper coil block. Now, this does look pretty decorative, but according to the engineer's manual, it does not seem to have any effective use besides it just looking pretty nice if you want to make certain structures or if you use this in multi-block structures later down the line. But also this is used in crafting for a number of early game items. One of those early game items is your kinetic dynamo and to make this you'll need a copper coil block in the center with two redstone one on either side and three iron across the bottom. Now what this does is you can attach different blocks to here and those will act as power sources. So two of them are the water wheel and the windmill. We'll go over the windmill in this video. Now an important part of this is that the windmill and the water wheel themselves will move and interact as they would normally but to draw power out of them you need the kinetic dynamo because this is where you connect the wires to. To make the aforementioned windmill you need windmill blades. Those are made with four treated wood sticks in the bottom left corner like you see here and three treated wood planks, two across the top and one in the center of the right column. And this will give you one treat, one windmill blade. Now to make the windmill itself, you need eight of those 
surrounding a piece of iron and that will give you your windmill. And what you do is you put this onto your kinetic dynamo. So the side you saw with the little opening, that's the side you'll put it. The base version of the windmill will max out at 15 IF per tick. And this depends on how many blocks it has in front of it. LV wires cannot be connected to the blocks that it needs to be. It has to be actually connected to this, an LV wire connector. You put this on the block you either want to draw power from or input power in. And to make it, you need three copper ingots down the center column and four terracotta blocks in the bottom left and the bottom right two areas on the left and right columns. And this will give you four LV wire connectors. Now, these can transfer 256 IF. One other thing to note about the LV wire connectors is that only one wire can be attached to it at a time. So if you have a generator generating power, that one item can only go to one machine. You can't have multiple wires splitting it to split that power. To need that, you will need the LV wire relay. Now the LV wire relay, as you can see here, can have multiple wires attached to it, but it does not act like the wire connector and you can't have power flowing through this to a block. All this can do is you can take multiple wires going into it and having a single, or it can have multiple wires going into it and have either more or less wires feeding out of it. I will show you later exactly what I mean by that. But to craft it, you need two copper ingots and two terracotta in the bottom corners, just like you see here. And this will give you eight wire relays. Cheaper than the connectors and better if you have larger networks. Now, as you're generating all this power, you need to kind of store it somewhere if your machines aren't using it. So you can make the LV capacitor. Now this holds 100,000 IF. And to craft it, you need three iron across the top, one lead in the center, with one copper on either side of the lead, a redstone in the bottom center, and one and two treated wood, one on the either side of the redstone, and this will give you your LV connector. Now, when you first get it, you can take a look up top. This blue area means that power can feed into there. If I put a wire connector here and connect it to a kinetic dynamo that a windmill's on, this will start accepting and storing power. But it doesn't come with an output. To change that, you take your engineer's hammer and you pick a side, I'll choose this one, and you right click it. Now, what this does, it first adds another input which you can see here is blue. But I don't want another input, I want an output. So you simply right click it again to change it to orange. Blue means input, orange means output. That will be the same for all of the immersive engineering machines and blocks we will see throughout this guide series. Now if I want to deactivate a side, I simply right click it again and it's gone. This means that even if I have a connector here, it will not feed power into it, or you will get no power coming out of it. The final thing we will go over in this mod is the external heater. To make this, you need a copper coil block in the center with three copper ingots, one on either side of the coil block, and one above it. Then you need one redstone in the bottom center and four iron ingots in each corner. And this will give you your external heater. Now, it accepts power through this top, as you can see with this little orange square here, you put your LV wire connector on top. What this does is that if you place furnaces around this and you have power feeding into it, it will power the furnaces just like there's coal inside. So instead of using coal, you'll use power. And if you maybe you didn't place it exactly where you want it, if you select a side and right click it with the engineer's hammer, it will spin. So as you can see, it is the power is back on top. If I pick this side, I can have it rotate to the right and it will go down, but let's say I want it on this side. So I can go to the top, right click it, and now it's on this side. If I do it here, it will spin again, just to now it is on the bottom. If I put it down, there it is. And that's all you need to know about the external heater. You can rotate this block just like many others with the engineer's hammer, it's just this is the first one we have encountered. So as you can see in front of me, 
I have a windmill connected to a kinetic dynamo, as you can see. It is spinning and generating power. I have an LV wire connector on the bottom. Now, this block outputs on any of these sides. So they can be so your wire connector can be attached anywhere as long as it's not this front part where you would attach your windmill. I have a wire here going down, connecting into my external heater and a furnace right in front of me. So if I want, you know what, let me cook something. Let me get some ore in here. You know, let's get some gold. As you can see, it is powering up and it is quicker and it is acting like a normal furnace and Bob's your uncle, you now have a gold ingot. Let me get a whole stack. And again, this is using power. As you can see, it is going down rapidly. This means that this windmill that generates, that is generating 15 IF per tick isn't enough to power this external heater. So for that, you would need multiple power sources feeding into this block. But again, a wire connector can only hold one wire. That's where the relays come in. So if I come around here, you can see that I have two windmills with the wire connectors on the bottoms get generating power. I have them feeding down to this wire relay, two going in, but only one coming out to this LV capacitor. And as you can see, it's not getting power because I haven't turned it on. So with my engineer's hammer, I'll right click and now it is accepting power from my two windmills and it is fitting out into this to this wire relay and going to two external heaters but again they're empty they don't have any power and that is because this input is where it should be outputting so again i'll right click that power will feed out of this now into the external heaters so all this is now working because I have it now set up correctly. But what I mentioned before about the windmills is that as you can see, there is nothing in front of these for any areas. That is allowing them to operate at peak efficiency. But if for instance I start taking blocks, I put them out and then I'll start making maybe just a whole area of them blocking them then this will, windmill will visually actually slow down, forcing it to generate less power. Now it doesn't matter how high they are, just as long as there's nothing in front of them. And as you can see, these are big windmills. If I, for instance, go here for one, two, three, four, and I place a block here, the windmill will stop, because as you can see, it is hitting it. But if I get rid of this, it will take a moment and then this windmill will start up again. As you can see, it restarts. So there's a four block radius from the center area that they need to be able to spin. So if it, you place it down and it's not spinning, one of these blocks is hitting somewhere. Even though it might not visually because it could be in one of the gaps. It needs a four block radius from the center area to operate. And that's all you really need to know about immersive engineering to get started. Now you have all you need to start your journey through immersive engineering. Yay! That is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for some more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video. Thank you all for watching and have a good day. Bye.